Ah, so finally we get around to doing some upgrades. Uh, and the first one of those, because I decided uh, it was probably <clears throat> not the most important, but um, what's the most interesting? <laughs> and to be honest with you, the other upgrades can wait a little bit. So I'm going to get on and do Octoprint. Now, first things first, I think there is, uh, you know, Octoprint and Octopi kind of, excuse me, kind of uh, are used interchangeably. And so I just want to make it clear, at least in my head, what the difference between them is. Right now, so Octoprint is a piece of 3D printer hosting software. And Octopi is uh, a Raspberry Pi disk image that happens to contain Octoprint, as well as a few other sort of system level utilities to make Octoprint all work out of the box, basically. So that means there is an easy way and a hard way to get Octoprint running uh, on your Raspberry Pi, which is what I'll be using. The easy way is to use the Octopi image. And um, to be honest with you, unless you have some really good reasons to not use it, I would do that. Um, in fact, even on the Octoprint website, it just highly recommends you do that. Um, as far as I can tell, right now as of today there aren't too many good reasons to use the octoprint thing and install everything manually if you really like setting up stuff in linux and configuring it then yep cool do that i initially thought i was going to have to do that because i can't let uh, i won't get it too deep into the reasons why but i can't let the raspberry pi listen on port 80 on my network which um, octopi does by default so I thought I was going to have to go down the route of doing it manually with Octoprint. However, um, basically what you're doing when you install Octopi is nothing more than installing, you know, a, a version of Raspbian, the operating system on your Raspberry Pi, installing Octoprint and installing a couple of add-ons for Octoprint and uh, a couple of system utilities. That's all configured, ready to go out of the box. So if you need to change all of that or any of that, then you can do it. It's no different to really doing it yourself. So um, the other thing I was just a little bit cautious about to begin with was whether the um, updates of Octopi were, you know, being kept up to date and you'd get, you know, whether you were stuck with an old version of Octoprint. Turns out, no, um, it ships with ships. When you download it and install, I don't know, version 1.2.2, that's just plucked out of the air. I think I saw that somewhere. Um, but actually, uh, it will just update itself uh, over the internet to and keep, I assume, uh, keep Octoprint up to date. It certainly has offered to uh, update it to the latest version so far. So without all that being said, um, yeah, there's the easy way and there's a the hard way. Now, I'm going to do the easy way <laughs> today, but because there's a hard way, by Jove, I'm going to have to take it. I really have to <laughs> always take the hard way. Um, I'm just curious to see if there's any advantage whatsoever. To begin with, I thought I was going to have to do it, and I was kind of all, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll do that. And I sort of figured it all out, and uh, yeah, it's not, it's not really a big deal if you've done a few Linux stuff, stuff things before. Uh, but yeah, well, you know, time is power. No. Anyway, but you know, it takes time to do it, so uh, why bother? So I'm going to do the easy way first, and uh, then I will probably get around to doing the hard way and documenting that. Um, as a sort of an aside, my videos are sort of creeping into the longer and longer duration, which I kind of want to stay away from. Not particularly because um, it's any more work. In fact, it's potentially less work because it's less editing. Um, you can just chuck any old garbage in there and <laughs> let it go. But uh, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I can't imagine anybody wanting to listen to me for more than 10 minutes at a time, uh, if that really. Um, so half an hour, is probably a push in my mind. However, these things take a little bit of time and um, I'm afraid this is going to be another one of them. So what are you going to need in order to get Octoprint up and running for your 3D printer? In my case, a sort of Prusa i3 Mark II clone that I built. Yeah, you probably saw that. Uh, well, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi and um, which Raspberry Pi you have doesn't really matter that much. Um, except for the original Model A's, which I can't really believe anybody still has or uses. Um, I have got, in fact, two original Raspberry Pi Model 
bees here which are perfectly usable um, and probably anything newer. If you're using anything older than the Raspberry Pi 3, which I believe is the first one with built-in Wi-Fi, you are going to need to make a decision on whether you connect it through the um, the uh, LAN ports built into the Raspberry Pi, i.e. a wired connection, or you're going to uh, use some kind of USB Wi-Fi dongle. I don't really like um, Wi-Fi a great deal, unless I, you know, I mean, obviously it has its uses, but uh, where possible, um, I try and keep wired connections. It's much faster, and uh, yeah, I spent a little bit of time <laughs> putting a lot of wiring around my house and uh, in my workshop. So uh, yes, I'll be using wired connection. So if you need to, or if you want to, or if you don't have the possibility of using a wired connection and you need to use Wi-Fi, then there's probably one thing you need to bear in mind, and that is these original. Um, uh, Raspberry Pi Model Bs only have two USB sockets. Now I think if you have the next one along, which is the Raspberry Pi Plus Model B, then they had four, and anything newer also has a bit more. Uh, which means that you're going to have to choose, if you've got one of these babies, you're going to have to choose between having a webcam and having Wi-Fi, because uh, one of these ports is going to get taken up with plugging it into the uh, 3D printer Arduino. So yeah, seeing as I have two of these, uh, my intention is to use one of these, that one, doesn't really matter, uh, to install the Raspberry Pi image on. And I will use the other one to fully install uh, from scratch Raspbian and uh, Octoprint and everything manually. But we're not going to bother with that for now. We're going to do the uh, OctoPi route on this one. So the other things you will need, obviously, is an SD card, and I have an SD card of your generic type. Uh, this is a four gigabyte one. I can't remember off the top of my head if there's a limit on the size of the SD card you can use on these older Raspberry Pis. Can't remember, look it up. But four gigabyte works and um, it's certainly enough to run the operating system and Octoprint. Bear in mind that when you send prints to uh, Octoprint, it's also going to store those on this SD card, or you can tell it to store it on the SD card if there's one in your printer. But by and large, it's going to be stored on a node. So the more space you have, probably the better. So aside from uh, the SD card, the Raspberry Pi, you will need some means of uh, reading and writing to this SD card. Uh, that will probably be an SD card reader uh, in your computer. Uh, bear in mind that um, I'm going to be doing all of this uh, via Windows because that is my weapon of choice. Um, I do have Mac, but um, yeah, I primarily use Windows, so that's what we're going to be using here. Uh, the other things you're going to need is um, obviously some LAN connection, a uh, wired connection in my case. Um, you're going to need a uh, power supply for this, which is a micro USB 5 volt thingy from your mobile phone or whatever. Um, you're also going to need um, a cable, a USB Type A is that or Type B? I remember not. But anyway, your basic normal USB cable to plug um, into the Arduino on the 3D printer. And you may also need oh, one of these, which is a webcam. And uh, this one is, I've fashioned this really sophisticated and lovely uh, platform stand for my webcam. It is in fact I don't know if you can just about see that. It is an old alarm clock, um, which was a piece of crap anyway. <laughs> so this is the most useful that it's ever been. So that's taped to there, literally to get it to the right height. And uh, this is the this is the webcam that I have been using to do some of my uh, sort of webcam shots of the printer in action so far. Too much information. You didn't need to know that. So anyway. Uh, I think we're set. So I'm going to get onto the computer. Uh, we're going to download the We're going to download all the necessaries, and we're going to get uh, Octopi and Octoprint up and running. Okie dokie then. Right. Well, we're going to need to download a few things. Quite obviously, um, I will put all of the links in my supporting post on my web page, which will be linked in the description below. Um, whichever method you're using, i.e. whether you're going to use the Octopi image or whether you're going to set up um, Raspbian or whatever flavour of 
Linux you like on your Raspberry Pi and then install Octoprint manually. Uh, either way, you're going to need to be able to write the um, images to the disk. And uh, yeah, so we're going to grab a little utility called Win32 Disk Imager. Um, so we'll basically just go on to the address that you will find in the link and we will download that little doohickey. And whilst we wait for that to download, we're also probably going to need this SD card formatter. This comes from the sdcardassociation.org. Again, the address will be in the description. And uh, what this does is it allows you to properly and fully format an SD card no matter what type of partition and formatting it has. Uh, basically, a card formatted for Linux systems uh, will have very strange <laughs> consequences when you plug it into a Windows computer. So shall we sh 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 so we shall download that for Windows uh, as I'm using Windows there is a version for Mac and uh, we have to go down here and we have to accept some kind of agreement and that's downloading as well. So the other thing we are obviously going to need is uh, Octopi in this case and again the link will be in the uh, post. Um, it's on GitHub and uh, we don't really need to do anything particularly fancy here. We can scroll down and you'll see a big green button that says download Octopi. You click that and uh, the latest version will download. So once that's all finished downloading we should have them on the desktop. The um, Octopi image is still downloading but we don't need to stress too much about that. What I'm going to do next is insert the SD card and this is just your bog standard full size SD 4 gigabyte effort um, which has previously been used in a Raspberry Pi so I insert it into my card reader and you'll see that Windows kind of goes a bit ballistic and says well, I don't know what's going on there you'll end up with uh, two drives showing and uh, asking to format it just just say no <laughs> just say no to everything if we open up the actual PC to look at it you will see and I can tell you because you probably won't see but it's created two drives an E drive and a J drive the E drive is only 60 megabytes and the J drive will be inaccessible uh, that's because they are formatted uh, for Linux use so this is why we download the SD formatter so the first thing we'll do is open up the zip file that downloaded extract out the setup.exe run the setup.exe and uh, yeah basically just follow the instructions to install it which is all pretty straightforward once it has installed you will end up with a nice little link on your desktop unfortunately I hate that but anyway that's what happens <laughs> So anyway, it's quite handy because we can run it. Say yes, it's all good. Um, it will now locate two USB drives, which is uh, basically the single SD card, um, but uh, it's split into two logical drives. Now we need to do some options here. So we click on the option, we'll do a full arrays and we'll do format size adjustment on. What that's going to do is it's going to attempt to patch those two logical drives that are on one physical drive together to give you your entire, well, as much uh, memory or disk space or card space as it can. So we OK that. Um, select the E or the first, in my case it's E, but the first one and it will probably select that automatically for you. You can change the label if you want or you can just leave it at boot, that's fine. Click on format, it will warn you, uh, yeah, it will remove everything off the drive, but uh, seeing as we're going to overwrite it anyway, that's fine. Click OK, let it do its thing, which might take a couple of seconds. You might get a few errors along the way, um, just kind of ignore them. Basically, it will eventually uh, finish, it'll probably take 30 seconds to a minute. And uh, the important thing down here is that it is saying the total space is 3.74 gigabytes, which is probably what we can expect to get out of the 4 gigabyte card. If we now exit that and uh, we open up the card regularly from the uh, Explorer, we can see that we have now lost the J drive and we have one E drive with uh, your sort of expected amount of 3.74 we can go into it 
and uh, I think it's formatted as, there you go, FAT32. So that's all good. That is now a recognizable uh, drive from within Windows. So now what we can do, we've basically finished with the uh, SD formatter. So I will get rid of its stuff here. And uh, we want to open up the Win Disk, Win32 Disk Imager, which we downloaded. And uh, basically a very straightforward install again. So just follow the instructions. Uh, once that's all finished, I don't really want to see the README. I will click launch Win32 Disk Imager. It will launch, hopefully. <laughs> Any second now. Any second now. Computer, there we go. Right, now let's get the uh, Octopi image, which comes down as a zip file. So we open up the zip file, extract out the image file to your desktop. Well, in my case, to the desktop, but if you want to install it somewhere else, you go right ahead. That will extract out the image file for Octopi. Bosh, there it goes. We'll close that down. We no, no, no longer need that zip file, so we'll get rid of that. We can now go back to the Win32 disk imager, click the little folder here, find wherever you extracted your uh, Octopi image, which was the desktop in my case. Double click it to load it in. Make sure that the drive that you just prepared with SD formatter, or if you didn't have to do that, make sure it's selected the right drive letter here. It is E. That is the right image. So we'll just click on right. Uh, yes, we do actually want to do this. Uh, yeah, if you're scared about overwriting your SD card, well, get on with it. <laughs> just make sure it doesn't have any important photos or something on it. And in any case, if you just did the SD formatter, well, you already lost those photos. So, yes, it won't take too long. Uh, we'll whip through this. So as you can see, uh, it is about 90 odd percent finished and it's taken about two and a half minutes so far. Um, when it does finish, it will uh, attempt to remount that SD card in Windows. So you'll get some of those weird little pop-ups again saying, I don't know what that is. That's fine. So the right's successful. We can exit and you'll see it's done all these weird things. Just make sure you don't go ahead and format it again. Just cancel out of this. Yeah, just ignore all the errors. You can exit out of the Win32 disk imager, cancel all that, and uh, the SD card is ready. So I will get rid of these two things because I don't want them. And uh, you can pull out the SD card from your card reader and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. Power it up and uh, yeah, then we're ready to do a little bit of um, configuration before we get going. Okay, so once your little SD card is all back at home in its Raspberry Pi little den there, um, just make sure that you're powered up and you're connected to the network with whichever method you're using. In my case, it's a wired connection. So uh, yeah, I can see that the network activity LEDs on the Raspberry Pi are flickering away. So that's probably a good connection. Now what we will need to do is to uh, connect over the network to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, if, in, order for, <laughs> in order for us to do that, we're going to need, well, you've got options, but I'm going to recommend to use Putty. And uh, Putty is available if you do a Google search just purely for Putty, P-U-T-T-Y. The first option that will probably come up is download Putty. And you'll see that you have various flavors of Putty for various uh, platforms. Um, you're most likely 64-bit Windows. <laughs> uh, so download the right one. Installing it, pretty straightforward. I am not going to install again uh, because I uninstalled everything else so I can show you the full process. But I don't really want to fully uninstall Putty because I've got lots of things set up on it. One last step before we can connect to it with Putty is we're going to need to be able to find the uh, IP address. And there are a number of different ways of doing that and it will very much depend on your uh, local network configuration. In my case, uh, all of the IP addresses are assigned by my BT Home Hub router type thing. 
So I will log in to that uh, by going to its address on the network, which in my case, and it won't be in your case probably, is 192.168.0.1. We can see that uh, Octopi is shown down here with its MAC number. Uh, that's not particularly useful, so we're going to need to go into settings. I will need to enter my password for getting into the settings. I will then go into advanced settings. Yes, and home network. And well, you've got a few options here, but this will obviously be very different depending on what your router looks like. However, in my list, it shows me all of my physical connections. And uh, the one at the bottom is Octopi, which it will be named. That is part of the Octopi image. You can click on that and it will give you a, uh, an IP address down here. Now, by default, uh, yours will probably be dynamic. In other words, every time you connect your Octopi to the network, it could end up with a different IP address. For me, and I highly recommend for you, that you assign a permanent IP address and it doesn't really matter what it is. In this case, this is the one that it automatically assigned and I have simply, I have simply clicked always use this IP address. Yes, I apply that, job done. There we go, changes applied, good. Uh, we no longer need this page. Actually, I will leave it open for a second for reasons we will get to later. Get rid of the downloads. Right, so we now know that the Raspberry Pi is on 192.168.0.67. Yours, most, most, most probably will be different, but uh, you get the idea. We need to remember that IP address for a second, so that when we open up PuTTY, we can put that in here. So it's 192.168.0.67. We will be connecting to port 22. We will be using SSH. And I will save this as Octopi in my list there. You could go on and uh, if you like, save passwords and login so that PuTTY automatically does that for you. Um, yeah, I don't really recommend that to be honest because unless you're used connecting to it a lot through PuTTY, well, just type it in. So then click open. It will come up with this uh, security warning that's basically just absolutely fine. It's PuTTY telling us, do we trust this um, piece of hardware we're connecting to? And this is its fingerprint. Uh, we just say yes and we get up our beautiful little Linux command line. And uh, by default, as, as uh, well, all Raspbian distributions come, it will be uh, Pi as the username and Raspberry as the password. So you can log in just like that. The first thing you will really, really want to do is to change that password because as I said, every <laughs> version, every copy of Raspbian in the world comes with the same login and password and it does have um, super user privileges. Well, yeah, you can sudo to get super user privileges. So uh, somebody could cause you all sorts of harm if you don't do this. So what you wanna do, first thing is just do P A W S W D. It will ask you to enter your original password, which was Raspberry, and uh, it will ask you to enter a new password, which you can do yourself, I guess. <laughs> so there we go, password is now changed. The next thing you're gonna need to do is expand the file system, and to do that, you will need to do sudo uh, raspberry hyphen config. You will get this pops up and the first option that is there is expand file system. It's highlighted in red, just click enter. You will likely get some kind of little error, yeah, just like that, but that's fine. That just means that you need to reboot. So you click OK. You can then just move the cursor keys on your keyboard right or left, it doesn't really matter until the finish is highlighted red. Click enter. Do you want to reboot now? Say mm, yes. 
you will have to, uh, well, you will get a disconnection anyway, but uh, you can just close down the putty window. Yes, I am sure. Now, the next steps kind of vary slightly on a few different things, um, and I will try and detail that as briefly as possible. So if you are happy to go ahead and use uh, OctoPi as it comes, you're basically done. Um, you can skip this next step. Um, however, if you need to configure some things in OctoPi or OctoPrint and some of the plugins separately, which sadly I need to do, then uh, there's a few things that you need to change. In my specific case, what happens with the uh, default OctoPi, it installs other plugins to enable you to access Octopi through your web browser on the default uh, HTTP port, which is port 80. Now I can't let it do that because of my network config and for things that are set up on here for work, um, I can't let it use port 80 at all. So I need to go in and just change a couple of settings. If you have no known requirements to do this, then just skip ahead to where I discuss the next stage. And I will put a time code link to the next stage in the description below. So you can just go down, click on that and jump this bit of nonsense here. So if you do need to configure, and I'm only going to be changing the ports here. If you do need to configure that, we need to go back into Putty as it's rebooted. We will um, open the uh, Octopi session that I saved. We will log in as Pi again, and obviously using our new password, like so. I will actually go as the super user here, just because, well, it makes life easier because I don't need to have to keep doing sudo. Um, if you don't, if you're not really comfortable about having root access, then uh, just use sudo uh, for the commands that need it. So the first thing uh, that I'm going to do is I need to change the port that um, Octopi itself is looking for uh, communication on. And that is stored in the Pi's home directory under a hidden directory called Octoprint, I think. Indeed it is. And if we have a look in here, we will see that we have one file which is called config.yaml. So we go into config.yaml using whichever uh, text editor you prefer. In my case, I'm using Nano, and that is installed by default on, uh, I think on this distribution of uh, Raspbian, I think. And I will simply go down to the section that specifies the front end. Oh, where are we? No, sorry. <laughs> I will go down to the section which has the discovery plugin, which is included by default now as part of the uh, Octoprint installation. So it is saying look on public port 80 and I don't want it to look on public port 80. I'm not going to use or I will not allow it to use port 80. So I'm going to change that to a port that I'm not using whatsoever, which is in this case 4444. I will save that. That's all I need to change here. And uh, the next file that needs changing is in the, what is it, in the HA proxy config, I believe. Let's see what we've got here. Yep, there it is. There's a uh, text file there called haproxy.cfg. So I will nano into that and this will normally have um, root write privileges only. So if you haven't logged in as root like I have done, you will need to put sudo in front of this command. Sudo, sudo. Um, once you load that up, basically then we then skip down to where it's configured. There we go. So this is where the public uh, front end of the uh, HA proxy is configured. And currently, as you can see, it's set to 80 and I will change that to 4444 again. I will leave the front end at uh, 443 for SSL because I don't use uh, SSL anywhere around on my local network. So that is not an issue. That is it, that's all I need to change here. So I will exit and save. 
uh, we're done. I will exit out of super user and I will exit out of putty. Uh, and now that's yeah my my little bits of configuration I need to do changed and we will get on back with the scheduled program of testing it out. Okay, so it's now time to test out our install of OctoPy or OctoPrint or OctoPrint on OctoPy. So open up your favorite browser. In my case, I'll be using Chrome. And uh, type in the IP address that we discovered that the OctoPrint uh, is using. So it's 192.168.0.6. In my case, now if you didn't follow along and need to change uh, your ports, then that will do. You just go to that address. However, in my case, uh, if you skipped over the last little bit, um, I need to change my ports, and I'm using uh, 4444. If you're sticking with port 80, which you may, you know, I mean, if you've got no reason to change from port 80, then don't do it. Um, and you won't need to put in the colon 4444. You'll be good to go just with the IP address. You will need to, uh, before I press enter here, <laughs> if you've just rebooted the uh, Raspberry Pi, you will need to give it a good sort of three minutes-ish, four minutes to actually finish booting and for OctoPrint to fire up properly. Um, so let's hit enter and see if it's ready. And if it's not ready, then uh, yeah, it's going to be fairly obvious to be honest. But there it goes, it's all ready. It does take a little while to load. Um, now the very first thing that you're presented with is configure access control. Now if you are absolutely sure that uh, your uh, Raspberry Pi is not accessible from the internet, which uh, you need to be pretty sure about that, um, then definitely use this because otherwise somebody can jump off the internet onto your Raspberry Pi and uh, do what they like with the 3D printer, including, yeah, burning your house down potentially, I guess. <laughs> so uh, yeah, create a username and password and uh, I shall do so right now. And then, uh, yeah, click on to keep access control enabled. Now you would think that uh, having done that, you'd be logged in, but you're not. <laughs> so you need to go up to the top and do login. Log in with those details that you just created. Uh, I'm going to click on remember me on this particular browser. The login was successful. And uh, yeah, so that is Octoprint all up and running. Now, the next thing to do is to plug the printer in, uh, i.e. plug the USB cable from the Arduino into your Raspberry Pi. And if you've got one, plug in your web camera. Uh, more or less any web camera should work, uh, put it this way. You'll be unlucky if it doesn't. So once you're all plugged in and uh, powered up on the printer, and of course the Raspberry Pi still, and your webcam, um, you can set up a few things. Now, um, you can leave the serial port on auto to begin with. I would suggest once you know what it is that you set it permanently, because sometimes when it's on auto, it kind of, yeah, it causes a few errors. Uh, with board rate, I'm going to set mine to 250,000. Uh, again, auto will be fine and will probably, if it can, connect to 250,000 anyway. The reason why I'm setting mine to 250,000 uh, as a default is because I want it to tell me if it couldn't connect at 250,000. We'll leave the default uh, printer profile and we will save the connection settings. If you want it to automatically connect every time uh, you power up the Raspberry Pi, then uh, tick that box there. I don't really want to too much. And then and just click the connect button. There it goes. It's doing a little bit of jobby. It's connecting as you can see down here. And it has connected. So we can go back and we can open up the connection port again. Connection thingy again. Connection box again. Uh, in this case, and you don't need to do this, but I'm going to, I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to go into the serial port and I'm going to connect the one, that one there, which it connected to before. I'm going to save those connection settings and I'm going to connect again. And there we go. We are operational. Now, if we skip on over to the control tab, there we go. There is our webcam viewing our 3D printer. 
and uh, if we want we can move the uh, axis around like so by using the controls here backwards and forwards backwards and forwards lovely jubbly now this is basically octoprint is going to replace uh pronterface for me at least you may be using something else um, it does more or less the same things um, and there's a few different settings and different things you're going to do which yeah I'm not really going to cover here because most of them you can leave them just how they are but uh, to quickly go over it obviously we've got our temperatures here which has got a graph and you can set the temperatures so if I set my bed to 45 degrees click set you will see that uh, the target pops up goes up to 45 degrees and then the bed temperature should start rising and there it goes you can see the refresh rate of this is quite slow you can change that if you like it's fine for me but you can also see down here the actual temperature of the bed I'm actually going to turn it off for now because well, I don't need it hot set it to off this target will drop back down to zero and the bed should uh, cool down so the other thing we've got is the control panel which we saw which is just yeah pretty much if you've used Pronterface you'll recognize what all of that does but you do have this beautiful addition of being able to see uh, your printer whilst it's doing it. The G-Code viewer will show you a model if you've got one loaded so let's load one up and uh, you can just drag and drop files right from your desktop or from your PC onto this page so I will do that with a part upload locally there it is uploaded if we want to load it in you've got two options you can load it or you can load it and get it to print straight away I'm just going to load I don't want to print anything right now and then in your g-code viewer you'll get that so you can center it you can zoom it in on the model uh, now basically what you've got here which is slightly different maybe to some other ways you might do it is you're only really viewing one layer at a time and you can move this up each layer uh, so if we go to our first layer that's the end of the first layer done now if we move over here we can sort of scroll through the uh, tool paths for that single layer and we can go up to another layer that's got up here somewhere and we can do the same so you can see the tool paths for that layer there's a few options down there um, it gives you some information it doesn't unfortunately give you much in the way of a time estimation or anything like that but uh, well you can get that out of your slicer most likely you've then got the terminal if you want to uh, you know see what the uh, communication with the printer is all about you can see all of that which is the same in Pronterface really um, there is this sort of keep alive m105 that just keeps ticking along you can get rid of those by clicking suppress 105 m105s and then you'll back to see in your g-code and of course you can manually type some g-code in here if you wish the last tab here is time lapse uh, which is off by default um, now i haven't actually used this yet so uh, i'm kind of make a guess here if you change this to timed um, you can set what you want the actual uh, movie output uh, frame rate to be in my case i keep everything at 30 frames per second how long you want it to keep a recording after the print has finished in my case nothing really um, and how often you want it to take a snapshot for that uh, uh, time lapse uh, 10 seconds yeah good enough save that as a default save that and basically what happens is it will automatically start a time lapse every time you start printing and will automatically end it once it has finished um, there is also the option here to rather than have it uh, do a photo every 10 seconds you can do a photo every time it moves up a step on the z-axis um, uh, if you need to get into all the settings there's the button at the top here and you can configure all sorts of stuff in here which I'm not going to go over it works just fine how it is and uh, yeah so that kind of brings us to the end obviously if you want to uh, go ahead and print something then you just hit the print button i'm not going to do that because nothing's set up downstairs for it so that is octoprint uh, set up in the easy way uh, by downloading installing and using the octopi image so that about wraps up the easy way to get octoprint up and running 
I was going to try and cover uh, accessing it uh, over the internet, but uh, it was kind of uh, yeah getting pretty long anyway. So I might leave that for another video. There are sort of some security considerations and you need to do a little bit of configuration on your router. Uh, so yeah, I think I'll do that as a separate video. Uh, I'm also intending to hook up um, some additional hardware, maybe, maybe an Arduino driven thing, which essentially allows me to uh, shut down the printer completely, power it off. In fact, you can do that through Octoprint. Um, but I'm probably going to do something separately to uh, kill the power to it. You know, if I happen to set a print job going, it's going to be going a long time and go out. Um, and then I want to shut it down remotely. Um, I can do that, which I'll probably build up something to do that. But also integrated into that is some more external monitoring of temperatures, more to do with the safety side of things. So monitoring temperatures on the power supplies and the ramps board and those things separate to you know what um what marlin's doing with the heat bed and hot end so that if the power supply starts to get a bit overheated then uh, it'll automatically shut everything down just for safety sake this is sort of one of the issues with you know sometimes 3d prints taking a long time you don't really want to be sitting there for hours and hours and hours making sure that things not catching fire uh, but at the same time, you also probably don't want to come home or back to work to find, yeah, smoke, fire, destruction. But apart from all that, I'm pretty happy that I no longer have to use the ancient laptop to uh, connect to the printer via Pronterface. Uh, having the webcam on there is going to be, well, yeah, pretty handy. And uh, yeah, all good. So um, unless anybody sort of has a preference and you can express your preference by leaving a comment down below, I will get on and do some of the electrical upgrades next. If you'd rather that I covered, uh, let's say, maybe Octo print via the internet um, or whatever, yeah, let me know. If I don't hear anything, well, I'll carry on doing my own thing, which will be uh, upgrading the MOSFETs and fuses so I can actually start to get the wiring on this thing tidied up, finished off, and yeah, we can call it done.